Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name's Liz and for today's video, I have no theme. It is a just creating kind of video. I recently went to Hobby Lobby and found a ton of clearance items that I wanted to make over and make new pieces with. I was searching for some patriotic pieces because I want to do some more patriotic DIYs and I just found a whole bunch of things. We are gonna get started. I am going to show you a bunch of stuff that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. So I went to Hobby Lobby today and I went to grab a couple gift cards for my giveaway on the first. And I I spent some more money than I was anticipating. <laughs> and um, there was a clearance section full of discounted items, signs, and all sorts of stuff that I thought would be really fun to do over. Plus I wanted to look at the patriotic stuff that they had out. So I'm gonna show you a brief little, you know, overview of everything that I got. And then we're just gonna get into DIYing. I don't exactly know what we're gonna do today. I am just gonna figure it out as I go. Just kind of find <laughs> things that I want to make and make them. So I found lots of signs like these, $7.49 for this pretty ginormous sign. I mean, it's not ginormous, but it's really big. And some other smaller signs. This was um, $3.74. And this is full of clearance signs. Nothing is over $4 in this bag. And you have some pretty decent sized signs. Like this one, it, I, okay, I lied. This one's $4.49, so this is over $4. But it's a nice big sign with chunky wood frame. And it's cute as is, or we can DIY it. The possibilities are endless. I grabbed some patriotic stuff. I thought these were really fun. Those little wood pieces. Um, I grabbed some 14 inch plywood rounds. They're $17.99, but I always buy them when they're 40% off. And you get six of them in there. And then, just a bunch of random things. Oh, I found these on clearance. These were super cute. Look at that little pig. I think it's adorable. $2.24, and that's it. How adorable is that? I also got the cow that says gather $2.49 for the cow. And I just think he's adorable. So I grabbed those. I grabbed some puff vinyl. I've seen puff vinyl all over the internet right now. So I grabbed some just to maybe try it out. Not sure exactly what I was going to do with it. But you know, oops, possibly might do something. I grabbed a whole bunch a 4th of July stuff. Oh, I thought these were really fun. I found these bowls in the 4th of July section. $5.99, 40% off, and they come with four in each one. Anyways, they're a dip and snack set. How fun is that? We are huge dip people in our family. Chips and dip, dip in veggies, dip in fruit, all the dips, and I thought that those were really fun. So I grabbed some of those. Like I said, a bunch of patriotic stuff. Um, I got this humongous round for, it was $18.99, but half off, so 50% off. So a little less than $10 for this humongous thing, and it has a really good inside too. It's got like that big frame around it. I'm not sure what I want to do with it yet. I'm still deciding. Like part of me wants to paint it like a watermelon because I thought that would be really cute. I could make a huge door sign with it. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I also think it'd be really cute as like a huge tray. So who knows? <laughs> and then I found this cute mason jar. This was $2.99, 50% off. So $1.50 for that. And then these two signs came as a set, $14.99 for the pair of these, and they are fairly large, and I thought they'd be perfect for DIYing. So I'm just going to kind of browse around, take a look through these. I'm also going to take a look through my Chocotour transfers that I have. I've been dying to use this one, and then also the grocery one. 
Where did it go? Right there. And I believe both of these are still available on Chakator's website. So lots of transfers that I have not used that I really want to use and um, make some really pretty decor with. So let's go ahead and get started and see what I come up with. For this DIY, I actually picked up this pack of solid wood wainscoting. Um, they are reversible planks. I picked these up, I believe from Lowe's, but I picked these up quite a while ago and completely forgot that I bought them. <laughs> so I wanted to use them today. I also found this cut out from Hobby Lobby. It was $4.99 and I wanted to make a sign with both of these. So I started by taking three planks and cutting them down a little bit over 17 inches each. Now with these planks, they actually actually slide and connect all together which is perfect for assembling for a sign so I took some wood glue put that into the little cracks where you can slip the other part in and then for a more immediate hold I did use some wood glue super glue I'm just going to add the glue and then I'll slide the piece down inside of the next one and then I'll repeat that step for our last plank so I just added all my glue and then inserted the other piece into that slot. For any of the glue that seeped through when you are pushing this all together, I just took a paper towel and tried to clean up as much glue as I could. I'm going to let that cure and dry for a couple of hours, and then I'm gonna go in with some white Waverly chalk paint. I did mix this with a little bit of water to make it not so full coverage. I kind of wanted more of that whitewash look to it. And then I'm going to take my Waverly wax in the antique on a chip brush and dry brush over the entire thing. Now I wanted all of those little slats and details to be more apparent so I took that wax and with a small brush went in between all of those little slats on the Wayne's coating boards. I did take some sandpaper just to rough it up a little bit more. I wanted some of that natural wood to peek through. Now for the USA cutout, I did take some Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and went over the entire thing. I love this stain because it's water-based, it doesn't smell. I can use it in my craft room. So if you're too afraid to use stains because it smells, if you're like me, you get a headache, choose a water-based stain and then you don't have to worry about the stinky stain smell. I added some of my Chocotor surface wax on here where I was going to put a transfer. I grabbed this transfer that says land that I love. This comes in the land of the free transfer from Chocotor's website. And I added that to the middle and chalked over it with my bright white chalk paste and peeled that off. And you have a super cute saying on there. And then I'm going to attach my cutout to my sign using some wood glue and a combination of my wood Wood glue super glue so I'll just center this on my sign as best as I can and then I did end up adding some heavy objects on top of it for a little bit so that the wood laid down flat and I didn't have any pieces that were sticking up and not adhering to the backing once that was dry I took these paper flowers from Hobby Lobby these are $5.99 but I believe that you can get them on sale when they come on sale don't quote me on that I'm not 100% sure but retail value is $5.99. I took these really pretty sunflowers and just tried to arrange them on the side, tried to figure out what looked best, and then I went in with my hot glue gun and started adhering the sunflowers down to the cutout. And that's all you got to do for this DIY. I think this turned out so, so pretty. I love the neutral look to it, but it's got that patriotic theme, and I think this one turned out really, really well. For this DIY, I'm gonna grab the etched sunflower transfer from Chocotour 
and I am also going to take a piece of wood. I believe this is a one by four and I just cut it down to be a bit longer than the transfer itself. I wanna say probably about 15 to 16 inches. I used my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain on it on the front, the back, and the sides. And then I whitewashed over it with my Waverly Chalk Paint in white just with some water added to the paint. While that paint was wet, I did take my chip brush and go over all the paint. I like the texture that this added to it, kind of some streaks in there, made it look really distressed. I didn't add any more paint to the brush. I just kind of went over it so that my paint looked really streaky. Since I am using a chalk tour transfer, I'm going to go in with some surface wax to protect the surface and the transfer from bleeding or the transfer getting any kind of wood slivers stuck to the transfer itself. I placed my transfer right in the middle of my sign and then used my chalk tour paste in the black color. I think it's called velvet. Now I've been seeing a lot of patriotic sunflowers lately and I thought that this would work perfectly for this DIY. So after I transferred the sunflower on there, I grabbed some blue and red paint, put them in two little containers, added just a bit of water to make this more of a watercolor paint. And then with some small detail brushes, I went through my petals and did the blue and then did the red. Whatever I wanted white, I just left plain. But I love the look of the patriotic sunflowers. I've been seeing them all over Creative Fabrica and online. And so I wanted to try it out for myself, see what I could come up with. And I thought that this turned out so beautiful. So like I said, I just started out with the blue, just kind of did the petals randomly. Since this is watered down quite a bit, you can do it over the black paste that you put down and it doesn't really cover up the black paste at all. If you wanted to paste back over it, and make sure that the black was really visible, you could. I didn't, I just added my colors and I thought that it still looked good. You could still see the lines. So maybe if you weren't doing a watercolor and you were doing more thicker paint, you might want to transfer over the entire thing one more time, but I didn't worry about it because you could still see all the lines just fine. Now I felt like the petals were too plain, just being white. So I decided to take that blue again and I just painted inside of all of those leaves. Again, I could just paint right over all the black lines and the watercolor doesn't cover it up so you could still see the black lines for the leaves poking through the blue paint. Hopefully all of that makes sense. I feel like sometimes I'm terrible at explaining things, but you know, hopefully by watching it, you can understand what I'm doing. I wanted to add some stars and stripes to my sign. So I took the stars that came from the land of the free transfer, added that to the top. I want to say the color that I'm using is called Lakeshore. I felt like it matched the blue that I used on the flower really well. And then for the bottom, I'm just going to make my own stripes using some tape. I just added the tape down and then ripped off smaller pieces of the tape to use kind of as a guide to how wide I wanted my stripes to be. And then I used some red to paint in between all of those stripes. Now I wanted the flower to look like it was on top of the stripes. I just made sure to go around my flower leaves and stem as best as I could to make it look like the flower was on top of the red stripes to begin with. And then as a final touch, I took some twine, added it around the top and bottom portion of my sign, and that is it. I am loving this. I might want to do this technique again, but just with the flower portion on a square sign, or maybe even do half of the flower and do some words on the other side. I don't know, but I think that this turned out so beautiful. I'm loving the watercolor technique. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. For this DIY, I grabbed one of those signs that come in the two pack. I added tape around the entire frame. I did a lot of things to this sign <laughs> before I figured out exactly what I wanted to do. First, I stained it, hoping that I could get a grungy look with the stain underneath some white paint. But then I thought, 
that black, the black words are going to show through too much if I try to sand the white off. Some of that black will peek through. Then I grabbed another color, hoping that that would kind of cover up those black words a bit more and you could still see them through. So if I was to do this over again, I probably would have just sanded off the words from the very beginning instead of painting this two different colors and then sanding it. So I just wanted to show you the whole process because sometimes I have no idea what I'm doing. Sometimes everything is trial and error and it takes me a while to figure out exactly how I want this to look. So I just wanted to show you the process of what it took to get it to where it ended up. So I did take this outside and used my power sander on the letters to get the words off of there. And then I went through with a watered down white chalk paint and went over the entire sign. Now, when this is all said and done and painted, you can kind of still see where I sanded off those words, but when I finish it and add my words to it, you can't really tell, and I honestly feel like it adds a bit more to the distressed look that I was going for. I did take a stiffer brush that I had, and while the paint was still wet, kind of went over the entire thing. It smudged some of the paint off, added some streaky texture to it, and gave it an overall more distressed look. Once the paint is all dry, I'm gonna go in with my Chalk Tour Surface Wax again, protecting the surface of the sign protecting the transfer this helps with bleeding you don't have to use it but I prefer to use it I just notice a big difference when I use it and when I don't and when I transfer it usually it comes out perfectly instead of bleeding so this is what the sign looks like before I have transferred on top of it so like I said you can kind of see where I sanded those words off but I feel like it just kind of adds to the distressed look of the sign. So I'm gonna go in with two different transfers. I'm gonna use my mercantile transfer, and then I'm also going to go in with the groceries transfer. Now these are both available at the time I am recording this. These have been on Chakrator's website in the past, and then they've been removed and then put back on. So I don't know if it's transfers that they're gonna take off anytime soon, but just letting you know if you want to grab them, you might you may want to snag them before they eventually leave the website. Now I took my mercantile word and I'm always going to use my measuring tape to make sure I've got this in the center. I take my black velvet chalk paste and I start going over the words. Now I am a bit slower of a chalker, so I like to do the pull and paste method as I am pasting my chalk paste on there. I am pulling up the other side. You do not want to let your chalk paste dry to your transfer. You want to peel it up as soon as you are putting your paste down. That way your image actually transfers to your sign and it doesn't just dry to the transfer. I go in with the cute scale in the middle, again, making sure that it is nice and centered and using my black chalk paste. I use black for this whole DIY. I wanted just an old timey, kind of more rustic looking sign. So I did that in the middle. I took two transfers from the groceries transfer, the main street market and the family owned and operated. Those both come from the groceries transfer. And I just centered everything as best as I could, squeegeed some black chalk paste on there and that's it. That's all you got to do for this. I think this turned out so well. I love the vintage and old timey distressed feel to this. And it's one of my favorites that I am having a really hard time determining whether I want to keep it or whether I want to go put it in my booth to sell it. This is one of my favorites. So I may be selfish and keep it for myself. Let me know what you would do. For this DIY, I took a 14 inch round that came from this pack from Hobby Lobby. Again, there's six pieces in this. It's $17.99, but you can purchase them at 40% off when they're on sale, making them about $1.80 a piece. I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in white. Again, this is watered down for a less coverage look 
and to allow some of that natural wood to peek through on the sign. I'm going to take some matte Mod Podge and I am going to cover about half of the sign with the Mod Podge. I wanted to use a napkin on this project, so I wanted to add that Mod Podge down first. Like I said, I just covered about half of it and then let that completely dry. I like using my heat gun and getting the Mod Podge totally dry before you put your napkin down on top of it. Now I found these napkins at Hobby Lobby. They were 40% off and I'm going to remove the back ply from the napkin. Now this napkin is not big enough to cover the entire sign so I did have to kind of try to piece this together as best as I could. It didn't match up perfectly but I tried my best. So I just cut a little piece off to go on the end. I'm gonna put that main big piece where I want it, add some parchment paper down, and then using my Cricut mini heat press, I'm going to go over that entire napkin starting from the middle and working my way out. This is going to reactivate that Mod Podge and make it so that you don't deal with wrinkles or your napkin ripping anytime it gets wet using the Mod Podge. It just makes everything nice and flat and stuck down there and no wrinkles every single time. At least that's been my experience. This is like a foolproof version of Mod Podging and I love it. Once both of my pieces are stuck down to my sign, I took some sandpaper and just went over the edges to remove all the excess napkin. I wanted some shiplap lines on the top portion of my sign, so I just took this square ruler that I got from the Dollar Tree and drew lines using a pencil all the way up, and then I did flip it and add some horizontal lines as well. And then I did take my finger and just kind of smudge those lines. It's making it so that the lines aren't super harsh and kind of blends them in a little bit. I feel like makes it look a little bit more natural and adds some good dimension to it. I picked up this God Bless America cutout from Hobby Lobby. I don't remember the price of it. I took the tag off before I looked, but I want to say it was probably under $5 for it. I painted the Bless in white, the God in red, and then the America in blue. For the stars, I used a metallic gold. Now you can probably skip this step if you want. Looking back, I didn't really need to do it. I think it looks nice for the bless because you can actually see the little stitching marks that I'm making on there. But for the God in America, you can't really see them unless you see it really close up. But I was just kind of feeling like it needed a little bit more detail to it. So I went through with a black paint pen and added some dots and stitching marks to the entire thing. Like I said, you can skip this step entirely if you like. Some may like it, some may not, so it's really up to your preference. I took the sign, added some wood glue super glue to it, and stuck it down on top of my round. I did end up adding some paint bottles and other things to hold this down to make sure that it was going to glue nice and securely to my round. And that's all you gotta do. You could add a hanger on the back of this and make it a door sign. Keep it as just a sign on your shelf or put a hanger on it and hang it on your wall. But I think this looks really cute and I love the patriotic trucks on the front. This DIY is gonna be super simple and easy. I'm taking one of these signs from Hobby Lobby at $14.99, but again, you can get it 40% off when it's on sale. Also taking my Honeybee Farm transfer from Chocotor. I have been dying to use this transfer. It is one of my favorites, and I want a bee theme for the summer on my front entryway table, so I wanted this sign to sit on top of there. So I'm gonna start by adding my surface wax on top, adding my sign right in the middle. And then I'm just gonna chalk onto the sign. I'm using black for the words honey bee farm and wildflower honey. I do do this all in sections. So again, if you are a slower chalker like me and you don't want to risk your chalk paste sticking to your transfer or drying to it, I like adding my chalk paste and then pulling the transfer up, drying the chalk paste on the sign, and then laying my transfer back down. So this is what I do for pretty much the entire thing. I'm going to do this all in sections. I will smooth my transfer back out, move on to the next section to paste over, and then lift my transfer up, dry it, 
and then lay the transfer back down, smooth it out, and continue that process for the entire transfer. So for the fresh and the local on both sides, I used my shimmer gold chalk paste. For the little greeneries on the side, I used sage. For the B, I used black. For the crown, I also used that shimmer gold. And that's it. That's all you got to do for this sign. Super, super easy. And this looks like a really nice high-end sign that I purchased from a decor store. And I think it looks really, really nice. I want to do some more DIYs using this transfer. Maybe use the B and the crown just on a square sign. I'm not sure. But I think this turned out so pretty. For this DIY, another B1, I am going to take this long cutting board that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. It was $10.99, but 50% off. Now, I found a couple different things. You could get this bee and honeycomb stencil that comes from Hobby Lobby. It's $3.49. I personally prefer the adhesive stencils. I feel like you get less bleeding with them. So I did have this bee and honeycomb transfer from from Chakotor. I believe this came out last year. I don't think that it's on their website anymore, but you could always look on all sorts of places, eBay, Poshmark, Macari. You could find some Facebook pages where people sell retired Chakotor transfers, but it's really whatever you want to do. You could even use your Cricut for this. So there's so many different ways for you to do this project. I'm going to take my honeycomb and put it onto the cheese board or cutting board, or I don't know exactly what kind of board this is called, but I'm going to call it a cutting board. <laughs> For the sake of this video, I added my chalk paste on top. This is in the shade sunny side. I put it down on one end and then put it down on the other end and just chalked over it one more time. Now you want to let this dry completely before you chalk on top of what you've already done. This transfer pack came with the words, oh honey. So I laid this down on top, used my black chalk paste for the word honey, lifted that up and then then moved the O over slightly since it didn't fit on the board like this. Now when I did this, I didn't let the yellow chalk paste dry completely, so it did pull up some of that chalk paste. So if you're doing this, if you're layering, make sure that your colors underneath have completely dried before you paste on top. Then I took that B, added it to a couple different spots on the board as well and then pulled that up and you have these cute little bees and honeycomb and oh honey on there. I think it's really, really cute. I finished it off by using some twine around the handle and tying a little bow with it. And that's all you gotta do. It's gonna look perfect on my entryway table with all my other bee decor that I still want. There's still so many bee things that I wanna do <laughs> that I wanna add to my little bee collection and have my entire front entryway table decorated in bee themed. Currently it's still Easter. <laughs> decorated. I need to take the Easter stuff off and change it over to summer and bees. I will get there eventually. But that's it for this DIY. I think this one turned out really cute. And that's it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed just kind of the mix of all sorts of different themes of items that I did today, kind of farmhouse and patriotic and be all in one. But I really just wanted to play around. I didn't want to have to stick to a theme. I just wanted to create things that I have really been wanting to create. And that's just it. I took my time and my passion for crafting and this is what I came up with. Let me know what your favorite project was in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe before you guys leave. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next one. Bye!